Showtime! So you've been screwed over by artifacts, maybe so many times that you're just considering, hey, maybe I'm just a masochist. You know, I think we all have that one domain that it has screwed us so many times. The only explanation is that we have to enjoy the suffering or we just have really, really poor memory. For me, it's the peak of Vindanir. Of course, also ones like Crimson Witch and the Husk of Opulent Dreams to me. I would not dare even for a second try to pretend to anyone that I have had a good time with those domains. I would have an easier time convincing the world that season of Game of Thrones was actually a flawless masterpiece. Those are domains that have one good set and a set that's, well, not so good. So when you invest a lot of time into them, you kind of expect to at least kind of get screwed over, you know, unlike season eight of Game of Thrones. However, when you look at public opinion about artifacts, everyone seems to think that it takes forever, sometimes impossibly long to get a good artifact. It's something you see when you pay attention to the comments section or any discussion about anything to do with artifacts or resin is artifact RNG. Now the problem with RNG is, well, it's random and it's really hard to predict. You can't possibly quantify anyone's experience. Truly, there might be people out there who it really does take them months to find a good artifact. But the problem is, is what is good that the changes from person to person. Everyone has their own opinions of what they think is a good artifact, and that may be skewed by what they're subjected to. Just like I put in this thumbnail, this is not a good artifact. It's not a good artifact because it's a great artifact. This is worth emphasizing because these are the kinds of artifacts you will often see people show off. These are the ones people are proud to show. It's no different than social media where people like to post highlights of their life. You post about vacations, promotions, new jobs, like the exciting parts of your life, the highlights. And we as people, because our brains suck, we tend to compare our worst moments to other people's best moments. Cause well, frankly, this is what like social media and shit does. And again, our brains suck horribly. And Genshin is no different. I think a problem a lot of people have is that they compare their average artifacts to a lot of people's best artifacts. I mean, I could show that helmet off. That is a very good helmet, but a lot of my artifacts are just okay. They're certainly not as good as that one. That is one of my best across both my accounts, and that one happens to be on my free-to-play account. I don't even think people really give artifacts a chance to become artifacts like this. In my experience, it is very common to see people have very black or white opinions when it comes to artifacts. They either think things that are very good are shit because their standards are way too high, or they think everything is amazing because their standards are way too low, which is something we see the product of in a lot of those really hilarious account review videos. I mean, in that case, it's either really low standards or just a complete lack of understanding. You wouldn't expect so many people to fall into extremes, but sadly it appears to be the case. Either the gray area people are really quiet or they really are just a shocking minority. Here's a little test for you to see maybe where you land. Look at this goblet and tell me what your initial thoughts are. I mean, you can tell me in the comments below or you can just think it in your head. There's a good chance that if you think this is a bad artifact, your standards are probably way too high, especially for an onset goblin. It's not the prettiest artifact to look at. It's got three dead stats, and it's not like the crit rolls were absolutely perfect. End result aside, I don't think a lot of people would have ever given this artifact a chance to begin with. After all, it started out with the first three rolls, and at first I was like, hey, you know, if this gets crit damage on it, that's insane. And when it got flat HP, I still decided to at least take it a little bit further to see where it goes. I mean, look, I meant it earlier when I said that the peak of Vindanir is my worst nightmare. You'd think after dumping thousands upon thousands of resin into that fiery hellscape they call an artifact domain that it would finally spit something out of me finally worth something. But all it's done is lower my standards to an incredibly low value that gave me the hope to give this artifact a chance, and despite the fact that I'm glad that I did because I ended up with a good artifact, that domain can still suck my ass because I hate it and I never want to go back to it ever again. But anyway, it doesn't take a lot to take an artifact to at least like 12. After the first two upgrades went into crit rate, I was like, oh shit, this thing's actually got a chance. And it just kept going. And unfortunately, it did get another flat HP roll along the way, but 12.4% crit rate on an onset goblet is pretty good. I know for sure this is an artifact that a lot of people never would have given the chance. Honestly, myself included for a lot of different artifact domains. It all depends on your situation. You can have high standards for a feather and a flower because they are significantly easier to get than other pieces. Expectations for hourglasses, circlets, and goblets, for example, especially onset goblets, should be kept in check. On to the next but still related topic is actually taking risks. And when I say risks, I, I don't mean it's really that risky. 
Leveling new artifacts can be a little bit of an expensive endeavor in terms of Mora for new players or actual free-to-play players who don't have the battle pass. However, the risk of actually leveling new artifacts just to see where they turn out is pretty low. That is all thanks to the fact that you can actually just feed that into the next artifact, which I'm sure everybody knows at this point, but honestly, I don't think as many people take advantage of it as they should. Since you get 80% of the experience back when you feed a leveled up artifact into another one, the risk is pretty damn low when it comes to actually gambling on a new artifact. Combine that with the fact that there's even a chance that you get a two or five times multiplier and not only negate that loss, but you actually benefit. Not to mention, taking an artifact to level 12 costs only 87,000 Mora, which is very manageable, and that is without any bonuses. By level 12, you have a pretty good idea of what kind of potential an artifact actually has. If you got all shit rolls by that time, maybe it's just time to call it quits and then just use that for food for the next artifact that you get. As a bonus tip, when you're actually using these leveled up artifacts, especially level 20 artifacts, make sure you're using it on an artifact that has almost all good rolls. If you can get one that has a crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, energy recharge, it's all substats at level zero, that is fantastic to use a level 20 artifact on because the odds of it becoming bad are really, really low. And that way you're at least getting the most value out of your level 20 artifact as opposed to using it on one like my cup from earlier. And then if all those rolls went into flat defense, what was once a 20% loss is now becoming another even further 20% loss when I feed that junk artifact into another one. And another little tip on top of that tip is if you're feeding an artifact like that into another one, especially a level 20 one again, do not put junk artifacts with it to get it a little bit further. Put the artifact by itself, give it a chance to proc a two times or a five times because it will go to max level. An artifact actually only needs to be level nine to be able to go all the way to 20 with a five times bonus. There is absolutely no risk to doing it this way, and even though it may only be a 1% chance to get a five times, you should still account for it because there's no risk, therefore no reason to not do it. Now let's talk the strong box. Somehow there are still people out there who think that a strong box is not worth using. And if you think there isn't, you're just not looking hard enough because you see it everywhere. I look at Strongbox videos and not only do some creators themselves say the Strongbox is not worth it, but a lot of people in the comments say that it's straight up not worth it. And that is just untrue. I myself even had a kind of strong reaction against the Strongbox like in the first week it came out, but I quickly just thought about it and it only took me a second to realize, hey, I'm actually just trading nothing for something. Since you can't junk 5-star artifacts for Mora like you can with lesser rarity ones, the only way to extract true resin value out of these is by using the artifact strongbox. Even if you don't care for the 4 sets that it currently offers, it's still a good source of off pieces, like goblets for example. Or even circlets in the case that you actually have a good onset goblet, you know, or again hourglasses, whatever it may be. Hell, you even may get a flower so goddamn good that that could be your off piece. The strong box is just going to give you resin value for absolutely nothing. Don't be spending 5 star artifacts as artifact DXP, that shit will come with time as you do domains. The only way you will not be able to keep up is if you're either leveling way too many artifacts and your standards are too low, or you're getting so absurdly lucky that almost every other domain you're getting an artifact worth leveling. Which in that case, we all hate you. Now, something that's related to the strong box is set bonuses. Obviously you want your best set bonuses, but if you're a very long time player like me, for example, even on my free to play account, I have a wealth of good gladiators and wanderers pieces because for a long time they were being offered from the abyss for rewards and they're also rewarded from weekly bosses and character ascension bosses. So if you happen to have a whole set of gladiators that look something like this in the substat department compared to a bunch of heart of death that looks something like this, the gladiators is probably going to win even if you can't utilize the set bonus. It's near possible to give some kind of hard and fast rule about when you should do this, but all you need to do is look at the artifacts you have available and just make a choice for yourself and there are optimizers out there that can help you make this decision if you really want to. If you can piece something together like two-piece gladiators, two-piece Shimanawas to at least get 36% attack, that's pretty good too, especially since a lot of us have spare pieces of Shimanawas lying around because we're trying to farm emblem pieces and all we get is Shimanawas. And gladiators, as we know, comes from the strong box and other sources, so it's also easy to get a lot of that. There's even options for the HP and defense scaling characters, just not quite as easy to get as attack percent. As I started off with, artifacts are incredibly RNG dependent. 
Now, I don't think personally that the RNG is nearly as bad as people like to make it out to be. I myself have played numerous games where the RNG is just way worse, way, way worse. However, it is still random, and I don't want to invalidate anyone's experiences. We all have our own unique experiences when it comes to this stuff. Collectively, we can all talk about the pain we've had from just horrible artifacts, ones that we never get even a chance to get, or ones that we do get a lot of chances, but they all end up kinda garbage. For every person out there who truly doesn't get any good artifacts, even if they do have relatively reasonable standards like I first talked about, there's probably someone who just walks into domains and gets amazing shit right away and thinks that it's too easy. Both extremes do exist. There's no doubt about that. It's just really difficult to tell when people are just being hyperbolic and basically venting into the void on the internet when they actually complain that good artifacts are impossible to get. Obviously, they're probably being hyperbolic. They probably do have some good artifacts. I often like to say I never get anything good from a lot of domains, but the truth is I do have some all right pieces and they're definitely good enough to do the Abyss, even with C0 characters, with sometimes not even having five-star weapons. If there's one takeaway from this video, I would just say that know that you don't need godly artifacts to actually clear the Abyss as we have it right now. Sure, that may depend on what character you main. If you main Amber, you're going to need a lot better artifacts than somebody who mains Ganyu, for example. But you can't expect the game to cater to Amber, because then anyone who actually does follow the meta is going to have an even worse time in the game than they already do, where people complain that everything is too easy. Would I personally like some kind of system to alter artifacts in some way? Sure, but I also don't want that to be too easy. I would like to actually work for it, give us a real grind, because calling artifacts as we know it right now a grind is someone who's played way grindier games. It's, it's almost like calling a Kirby game a Souls-like game in difficulty. I hope this video helped you in some way, or at least somebody, because it's why I made it. I think maybe sometimes people need someone to tell them that what they have is actually good because all they do is compare the average of what they have to the best of what somebody else has. Because it happens in all walks of life, not just Genshin Impact. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it. If you have a tale of woe from an artifact domain that has just screwed you over as much as Peak of Indonesia has screwed over me, maybe share it in the comments. Maybe we can all feel a little bit better about ourselves by hearing about everyone else's suffering. Or collect a bunch of tears by saying how you've had nothing but a wonderful time and you have the best set of Crimson Witch that anyone has ever seen. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in the next one.